My name is Calliope, daughter of the sky god Zeus, and muse of much renown. Sit here at my perfumed feet as my poem unfolds before you, an epic that springs from the depths of the sea and finds its end upon strange shores. For this is your story, the story of Argonus, son of Argus the shipbuilder and friend to Jason the hero. Our tale begins like many a sailor's story before it, with tragedy and a lilting song that carries from one dark wave to the next. Awaken. Book One, The Blight. A frozen scream is etched upon the face of bewitched Typhus, helmsman of the Argus. This owl seems unaware of its preternatural perch, and untis the faithful Argo, her weathered hull rent, a stock Acastus, the son of King Peleus, and a light. This statue if it could be called thus, is that of Hylus, a man whose hands brought ore to water not but a day ago. This isle is littered with such debris, broken reminders of man's folly. The death that haunts this isle. No craftsman could sculpt a child so her planks broken and her floorboards sh Light glints off this strange carved stone, half buried in the sand. Abundant with boughs of leaves, this mosaic appears to be made of limestone and thus surprisingly light. The water that flows from these rocks would keep even the most stalwart from discerning what lies beyond.
This hound was not spared the fate that bef this statue would appear newly struck. Tis naught but a fisherman's net. Set so the west winds c This plank may yet have some value. Perhaps as kindling. Whether spooked or merely provoked, the stallion launches itself from the cliffside before mighty wings carry it far above. Nearly 200 men high, the massive bronze soldier stands silent, though salty mists shroud their form. This statue is of Minos, the king of massive stone doors are cradled by the sheer cliff face. A semblance of Pacify, the immortal daughter of the sun god Helios, guards the entrance into this mountain. The chalky fleece of this ewe, this wild sheep, appears interested in nothing more than the grasses that grow upon this beach. Tis Palamonius, son of Olenane Lernus, whose bodily frame and valor no man could match. Long, twisted necks adorn the pitted surface of this stone tablet. This young woman most likely a This child was not struck down by mortal ills, but surely by something that is beyond this world. Finding a trinket such as this upon these shores, let alone within the bowels of this tree, this grotesque statue is that of Honorable Castor, skilled to guide swift-footed steeds. The head of a once giant stone statue lies half hidden in tall grass and underbrush. While it appears to be chiseled from the same rock, this stone is set small ticks, like droplets of water, emanate from within this stone pedestal. The stone drops neatly into the groove, and the great eye slowly moves, revealing a hidden passageway. Small ticks, like droplets of water, emanate from within this stone pedestal. The lovely purple color of this flower conceals its poisonous nature. An intricate carving of a fish betrays which god inhabits the temple beyond. This carving is assuredly the work of a master craftsman. Ancient tome in hand. This priest was caught while this woman was surely an attendant of the temple. Even the pious have not been spared the bewitched. This vase, portraying Poseidon and a merhorse, may have once held water or oil. The shape of this stone tablet, embellished with detailed illustrations, would indicate that it is incomplete. Colorful tiles create an exquisite depiction of the sea god ruling his unlike the unearthly statuary that inhabit this isle. This towering statue of Poseidon shows the workmanship of a master sculptor's hand. 
Unencumbered by the burdens of man, this mosaic depicts the gods both at war and at rest. This stone is bereft of markings, offering no explanation for the small depression set into its surface. The yellow light it emits is curious. Deep waters, lavished with mermen and gods, are etched into this mosaic. Painstakingly carved by the pious, reliefs such as this can be found in any temple from here to Lurcia. These words recount the strange toils of Argonus, chronicler and maker of maps, washed up on strange shores and awakened by the voice of a goddess. Unseen hand forces Argonus from his feet and into a dense thicket skirting the stone path. A soothing voice murmurs in his ear as the sailor witnesses the passage of things only spoken of in tall tales, and even then, in whispers. Be quiet for but a moment, the voice counsels. Once the otherworldly creatures fade from sight, Argonus pulls himself from the dust and gazes skyward. Before him, held aloft, is a handsome woman, replete with glory and power. How many times must fair Athena save one man? The immortal asks, her head tilted with uncommon grace, her eyes soft. Before words can form on Argonus' lips, she continues. Tis not a query to be answered so readily, sailor of the Argo. Shadows gather, she says. There is a blight upon this isle. Have you not seen its handiwork? The flesh of your companions no longer flesh. Their bones, that of the earth. The woman's eyes drop. I fear my own hand may have set these dire events into motion. For this, I will make amends. But no well. Many of your brethren yet live, for I have seen them with my own eyes. Find them, Argonus of Crete, and as I did for your father before you, I shall provide a boat and passage from this isle. You have the word of fair Athena. Not a heartbeat later, the goddess is gone and breath gladly returns to the sailor's lungs. Tis Phalerus of the Ashen Spear. The statue is certainly that of the hero, Oileus, peerless in courage and strong in spirit. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. One can become extremely ill, consuming the berries from this black nightshade. Paul Canthus, son of Hail strong Erebotes. Calais was a welcome. Tenorus has lost a great son. Tis the visage of strong Asterius, son of Hipparasius, who stood two score of men against the Gagenes on the land of the Dolionis.
If not for its stone plight, this Methosian hydra is like the one said to have been brought low by Heracles during his twelve. This wayfarer's spear is both a formidable weapon and a sailor's crutch. Blessed are those who chance upon this manuscript, only to marvel. If not for its stone plight, this Methosian hydra is like the one said to have been brought low by Heracles during his twelve labors. Using the broken spear, Argonus plucks the necklace from its roost before laying it about his neck. This grotesque statue is that of Honorable Castor, skilled to guide swift-footed steeds. This necklace is not unlike one that was worn by Peleus, the son of the great sea god himself. Removing the necklace, Argonus holds it before the statue, praying silently that Poseidon recognizes it and grants audience to a weary wayfarer. The great sea god does not disappoint. Within seconds, marble shudders, foundations shake, and the heart of Argonus is quickened. The lord of all waters speaks. Who would call upon Poseidon? Only to be found wanting of tribute or song. Poseidon stretches forth his arm. Where are my concerts and vassals? Look about you. You may seek them, but they will not be found. They have deserted me, forsaken me in this darkest of hours. And who has set loose the scourge that you have borne witness? Athena's puppet, the son of Danae and Zeus himself. The sea god pauses for a moment, taking measure of the sailor before him. Yet, even so, my anger is not fit to be laid upon the shoulders of my bondservants, let alone set upon one whose necklace bears my mark. Leave me to my grief and seek me no more. I have opened a way for you. Take it if you wish, or abandon it. It matters little. The statue of the sea god turns his gaze away from the sailor and speaks no more. It is surprising to see an owl this white upon an isle such as this. The owl cocks its head. The snow white owl is beautiful. It is surprising to see an owl this white upon an isle such as this. This stone is bereft of markings, offering no explanation for the small depression set into its surface. The yellow light it emits is curious.
The soft white wool of this yew has been transformed into grey pitted stone. The chalky fleece of this yew is wanting for a shearer's work. This statue is of Amphitrite, queen of the sea. Sadly, the goddess did little to hinder the... I have offered many a prayer to the gods of the sea, fervently petitioning favor while tossed upon great swells within dark storms. Yet it was not until my foot felt consecrated ground that any scales of disbelief fell from my eyes. <laughs> 